Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. So it's February and that means that the 2022 Release Wave 1 features uh, are out. And what I mean by that is that the release notes are now published that everybody has access to, but we also were able to install the early access features uh, in our environments. So again, I'm gonna do a series of articles and videos on this particular release, just like I did for the other releases. And the first video here uh, is gonna be regarding the generic updates. So grab some popcorn and sit right back and hopefully you'll enjoy this video. So Microsoft is working on the new Power Apps read-only control for model-driven apps. And there are two major updates that this grid control has versus the old read-only control. As the name doesn't really explain, this control can also be configured to be used as an editable grid, which I think is a huge win, right? And the second thing that I want you to know is that this control will have infinite scrolling capabilities. So this means that users will no longer have to navigate across pages in a subgrid, right? They're going to be able to scroll down until they get to the records that they were looking for. So the grid will be available for public preview in April of 2022. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the in-app notifications for model-driven apps. These are notifications that will be shown in a model-driven app, right? So they can be created by Power Automate flows, right? These, uh, these notifications. And this functionality actually has been in preview since July of 20. 21 and i'm very excited to announce that this feature will be generally available in april of 2022 now i did a video on this topic as well so if you are interested in learning more about these model driven app notifications then make sure that you take a look at that video as well now the next one is actually a feature that I am very excited about. And this also really shows that Microsoft is really investing between that integration of Dynamics 365 and Microsoft Teams. So with this feature, users will be able to create an appointment in Dynamics 365 and add a Microsoft Teams meeting to the appointments. So this is gonna save users a lot of time because they're no longer forced to create Microsoft Teams meetings outside of Dynamics 365. And besides the ability to add Microsoft Teams meetings to appointments, users will also have the ability to join a team meeting from a Dynamics 365 appointments or from the timeline directly. Now, keep in mind that this is something that you're gonna be able to turn on or off in the environment settings in the Power Platform Admin Center. And this feature will also be in public preview in March of 2022. We already have a few tables that have the rich text editor control enabled. For example, the body of the emails and the notes, but now the description field of appointments in Dynamics 365 will also take advantage of this feature. And this rich text editor control will be supported for all model-driven apps and will be the default editor for appointments and emails. And this feature will also be in public preview in March of 2022. There's also going to be a new activity chooser, which will only show activities that are related to the app that you're in. 
So when you read the Microsoft Docs feature details, it shows that activities that are not included in the app metadata are now hidden from this new activity command. So what this means is that if the individual activities are not added to the model driven app, then they're not going to be visible in this new dropdown. Now, keep in mind, this also is functionality that we can enable or disable in the environment settings in the Power Platform Admin Center. And if you set this feature to off, then all activities will continue to show up in the activity chooser. And this is also going to be in public preview in March of 2022. Now, the Power Apps read-only grid control was actually released during 2021 Wave 2. And the change here is that this grid will be the default read-only grid in model-driven apps. So this means that this particular grid will be used for all views, right? All the page views and all the subgrid views in Dynamics 365. And this is important to know because this grid actually disables the jump bar, which is on the bottom of views. Those are those letters, right, that you see or that we used to see, I should say, on the bottom of those views. Now, if you need to re-enable the jump bar, then this is definitely something that you can do. I actually recorded a video on exactly that topic, how you can resurface the jump bar into these views. So definitely, if you don't know how to do that, I would definitely recommend checking out that video as well. And then it looks like Microsoft is finally getting rid of the legacy advanced find in Dynamics 365. And the new modern advanced find functionality will be available as public preview starting in February, according to the docs. Um, it is February. I haven't seen it yet, so we might have to wait a little bit longer because we're still early February, right? Now, it looks like the new advanced find, as you can see on the screenshot here, will be accessible from the Dataverse search bar that's currently sitting on top of those model-driven apps. According to the information in the release notes, this modern advanced find experience will allow us to create queries and views just like we were able to do in the legacy advanced find. And on top of that, we will be able to search view selectors for views. Does that mean that the legacy advanced find is going to go away? Absolutely. That's exactly what that means. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed the content, then don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks again for watching and until next week. Bye bye, guys.